Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, the other day when I was doing Dee Marble's uh, review on that Michigan balloon crash near my house, I got to thinking, it would be kind of neat to start a new series because lots of times flat earthers like to misconstrue news from space as fake news. And I thought it would be kind of fun to tear these things apart once in a while. Really, I guess we could have done the first one on this Michigan balloon crash, and I'll probably stick that in the playlist. But today I have another one for you. Start off with Jaron. And uh, today we're going to have a look at his take on the attempts by the Indians to land a lander at the South Pole of the Moon. Cue up the music. Uh, in space news today, I'm not sure if you saw this, but uh, pretty funny that, uh, you know, India tried to land on the moon today, failed. So not sure if you guys got a chance to see that. Uh, pretty funny video if you, you know, watch it. Now what Jaron's talking about is the Indian Vikram moon lander. And that was attempting a soft landing on the South Pole of the moon. However, on the way down, the first stage of the braking went very well, but the second stage of the braking was a little bit more than the design specifications. And as a result, the lander crashed into the moon about 500 meters short of its planned landing site. And it was a hard landing, and unfortunately, the lander was destroyed. Now, what really bothers me about this is, why is Jaron so gleeful? Of why does he take joy in somebody else failing? This was a national effort and a matter of national pride for India. They feel pretty bad about this. And uh, quite frankly, I think most of us feel pretty bad for them. I would have liked to have seen them do it. We haven't gotten a lander on the South Pole of the Moon, and it would have brought very good science that we needed. So, be that as it may, let's let Jaron continue. Do you remember, there was no humans in it. It's just a craft that they sent to the moon to land there. But the United States did it 50 years ago. Quite easily, they even had people in the craft. In fact, they got there, they got out, they put out all kinds of test equipment that send back data to the Earth you know, uh, seismographs and, and solar arrays and retro reflectors and they played golf and they drove around in a moon buggy and did jumps and twists and turns, all that fun stuff uh, in 1969. Well, we played golf on the moon because we're Americans and that's the sort of stuff we do. I mean, it's just us. Now, you have to remember too that the Apollo landings were the result of more than 10 years of work uh, as part of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. We had to get there before they did. You know, we had a little yardstick and we had things to measure. And uh, we measured up. So we managed to do it. That was a great achievement on our part. It was a great achievement for humanity. The fact that Israel and India are trying to do something on that level as well, I, I applaud them for it. I'm sorry it didn't work out for them, Jaron. With ridiculous technology, uh, and we're going to look at something funny in that regard as well. But yeah, if you watch this, uh, this is the final screen. They just got to this point and said, oh, we don't have any more data. And then these guys congratulated themselves and uh, everybody was sad because uh, India did not pull it off, much like Israel tried to do uh, You know, a few months back, also uh, failed. You know, Jaron, there's an old saying, it's better to try and fail than not to try at all. There's a life lesson there for you. Again, Here's the thing, I say it all the time, if you want to believe this stuff, you can go right ahead. You know, I mean, you shouldn't be watching this video so much if you want to believe in this stuff, because uh, I certainly don't believe it. And on this channel, what I do is I give you my opinion of these events, and you, you know, if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to be here. Well, Jaron, we come to this channel for a couple of reasons. One is just morbid curiosity and the cheap entertainment value that it offers. The other is that you have a very large YouTube channel. And as a result, a lot of people see your videos. And I and many other debunkers think it's extremely important that those people have an alternative to give them the correct information compared to what you put out on this channel. The majority of the stuff that I've seen from you, Jaron, is utter nonsense. You have a very, or shall I say, inadequate understanding of basic science. Your logic jumps to conclusions uh, at a world-class rate. And I think that people who don't know a lot about the sciences, perhaps they studied something else in high school, really need to get some good information. And that's why 
my fellow debunkers and I like to go and have a look at these channels and evaluate your evidence, or shall we say lack thereof. So, yeah, that's the uh, number one item on Space News today is that uh, these guys could not complete the mission, uh, even though the United States, they sent people there easily 50 years ago. But India, a fail. You know, Jaron, you just don't get it. Why do people do this? This presentation has sat on my computer for over a day now, and I tried to figure out a good way to end it. And... I found a clip from a small YouTube creator that I thought was just the perfect ending for it. In this era of impeachment and division and selfishness, I think that it would be very nice to go back to almost a month to the day before I was born, when we were led by people that inspired and offered hope and unified us. And I think that I'm going to go ahead and finish up with this clip. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by and happy holidays to you and your families, be it Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Christmas or Festivus. Thank you very much for making my channel a success this year. And my family and I wish you the best. Take care, guys. We meet in an hour of change and challenge in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. The greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. But condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of man's recorded history in a time span of but a half a century. Stated in these terms, we know very little about the first 40 years, except at the end of them, advanced men had learned to use the skins of animals to cover them. Then about 10 years ago, under this standard, man emerged from his caves to construct other kinds of shelter. Only five years ago, man learned to write and use a cart with wheels. Christianity began less than two years ago. The printing press came this year. And then less than two months ago, during this whole 50 year span of human history, the steam engine provided a new source of power. Newton explored the meaning of gravity. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available. Only last week did we develop penicillin and television and nuclear power. This is a breathtaking pace. And such a pace cannot help but create new ills as it dispels old. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer to rest, to wait, if this capsule history of our progress teaches us anything. It is that man in his quest for knowledge and progress is determined and cannot be deterred. We shall send to the moon, 240,000 miles away, a giant rocket more than 300 feet tall on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth but why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked.